Welcome. Last time we looked at a theorem of Leon Glass, which is a discrete uh, Poincare Hopf theorem, and it deals with a version of vector fields. Actually, Glass was motivated by modeling vector fields using graph theory in the discrete. And it's a beautiful theorem. It was formulated as a theorem of a graph embedded in a two-dimensional manifold, but one can also do that in the discrete without referring to the continuum, which is important if you are doing geometry in the finite. If you don't want to use the infinity axiom, maybe there is an inconsistency whenever you are using infinity. Uh, there are various structures in the discrete finite geometry which allows you to model. The simplest and most intuitive notion is the notion of a graph or directed graph. So uh, graphs are uh, very intuitive. Uh, what one also can look at are directed graphs. For directed graphs one has a, a notion of a, already a vector field. And today I actually wanted to say something about what do you mean with a vector field in discrete. It's an interesting question. Uh, just very quickly about the glass theorem. It's very uh, intuitive and what happens is so you have vertices, edges and faces and they together define the Euler characteristic and what you can do is you can take the edge, the values of the edges and you just notice that if you have an edge then either assign a change at the vertex or a change at the face, an orientation change and this shows that every of the edges contributes either to the index of the vertex set or the index of a face set and so the you know theorem follows directly from the definition once you see this. I also mentioned last time how one can derive this from my version of the poincare hopf theorem which is in general for any graph actually it works for any cell complexity, it works for a delta set even. So what you have just to have is you have the notion of inclusion and then you can uh, shove all these energies which you have from the higher dimensional part of space and you shove it to the zero dimensional part and then you get an index. If you do that in a non-deterministic way, if you just randomly distribute in the, uh, to the zero dimensional set, then you get Gauss border which is in the continuum gauss bonnet theorem, theorem for even dimensional manifolds. So there are lots of theorems, which beautiful theorems, which deal with Euler characteristic. There are more general theorems when you take, instead of the Euler characteristic, you take a different differential complex, like the Wu characteristic, the higher, higher characteristic. And uh, all these uh, theorems can be proven with two principles. The first principle is that you are shoving every higher dimensional part, the energies of the higher dimensional part to the lower dimensional part. And then for Euler, Poincaré, or Brouwer, Lefschetz, you, you use the heat flow. You use the uh, Laplacian, the heat flow, to shove everything to the harmonic forms. So it's all the two basic ideas which give you then essentially kind of something like a discrete idea singer uh, theorem. There are also uh, other theorems which I have mentioned uh, in the past which deal more with geometry or more manifolds like uh, the sphere theorem and Morse's SAR, Morse's theorem, Morse inequalities or SAR's theorem telling that if you have a, f a function at level surface this is uh, a manifold. Jordan's theorem kind of if you have a closed curve in it, it divides things in the inside and outside or higher dimensional version characterizations of spheres or loose dimensional which I've talked about. So these are all kind of playgrounds for finite geometry and the translation of theorems into the discrete actually works beautifully, reduces the complexity of the definitions and the complexity of the proofs and the theorems are the same. That's very important to me, the theorems should be the same. But there is still a, a problem which I kind of feel with a vector field. What is the notion of a vector field? If you have a vector field, what you really want to have, you want to have a dynamics, you want to have a, a flow. You want, for example, for a two-dimensional 
two-dimensional vector field, you want to have this pointer appendix and picture or... Uh, so that was actually one of the motivations of uh, glass. And uh, if you look at the directed graph, then there is not yet a dynamics, right? If you kind of have a directed graph and uh, here, the directed graph and you're going here, it's not clear where you should continue. There is no rule telling you where you should continue. There are various notions of vector fields which have appeared in the, you know, classically just taught multivariable calculus. You, know, you look at vector fields in two dimensions, three dimensions. It's a very classical thing in Euclidean geometry. It's just a map from a vector space to itself, a smooth map. At every point of the vector space, you attach another uh, vector. Or uh, you look at in, in differential geometry, you see that as a section of a tangent bundle. Right. At every point there's a tangent space, and so we don't have that in the, the discrete, we don't have a tangent space, but we have unit, unit spheres. So if you look at the node, then there are all the vertices which are connected to this unit sphere. It's kind of a projective picture also, if you look at the projective uh, space attached to every point in the continuum that's very close. In differential topology, or kind of I learned that in Hamiltonian, Dynamics, what uh, happens is you have this in notion of inner derivative, which maps you a k form to a k minus one form. It's this uh, contraction uh, picture. And then you can define something like a Dirac operator, d plus ix, and Carton's formula. This is then dix plus ixd tells you this is the lead derivative. I like that picture because the lead derivative then defines not only a flow on zero forms, but allows you to define a flow on arbitrary uh, differential forms. So that's very nice. And you can especially take ix kind of d star, and then you actually get the Laplacian. So the Laplacian, if you take the Laplacian, somehow you have not a deterministic thing, but you have a diffusion picture. And, uh, but then you can also just look directly at the wave equation. When I talked about this, the wave equation is actually equivalent to two Schrodinger Dirac equations. These are ordinary differential equations in the finite case, and you can study them. Now, uh, in the discrete, some notions of uh, vector field have appeared, like in discrete Morse theory, Foreman has just defined it as a map, kind of generalized the notion of a directed graph, where you get from a vertex, you get an edge. So it's a map which defines you from a k simplex, uh, k plus one simplex. But there is no dynamics with this picture. We want to have a dynamical system. We want to have an evolution. What I was looking at this week is something which is actually quite an interesting approach, I think. It's a graph theoretical, purely graph theoretical approach. What you what you do is you have a network, it can be directed, it can be uh, non-directed. Let's assume we have a non-directed graph, so it's like a town with streets, and uh, you assume that at every node, at every intersection, there's a rule which tells if you come from one side, you have to go here. For example, if I'm coming here, I am forced to go here. If I'm coming from here, I'm forced to go here. If I'm going here, I have to force to go here. So there's a rule which tells you when you come in, where you have to go out. So this is, you don't want to bounce back. You don't want to go back. You don't want to have a kind of a cul-de-sac situation. So this is a, uh, produces you a dynamical system, actually conservative. It's just a, produces you permutations here. And the question is what happens with this dynamics typically. So I'm also kind of intrigued by the question, what are the discrete analogs of, you know, genericity results like Oxtobula. And here I see, actually, I just made experiments yesterday. So I take, for example, the complete graph and at every point I assign a derangement. A derangement is a permutation which has no fixed point. The number of derangements by the number of factorials is, is 1 over e. So for large, for large n. And uh, then, uh, so there is, a, there, is, there is this law. And uh, what I see kind of if I, if I do that experiment is I see then there, there is actually in, you have to look very, very hard to find a case of such a vector field where not 
one of the paths is covering the whole town. And actually one of the questions you can ask or conjecture is that the, uh, you know, what happens with the, with the limit if n goes to infinity, or you can ask for every n, is there really always, uh, is there always a rule which uh, such, a, such a vector field, such that not every part of town is visited. They are rare, that's what experiments show. If you look at com complete graphs that they there are always such cases. I don't know what happens if you take a discrete manifold, what happens there. So it's an interesting playground to study uh, vector fields in the discrete. So that's what I wanted to say today.